All right. Hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Mona and I'm the communications coordinator for Epic and welcome everyone to today's webinar on how to tell your brand story to wow your audience. Today's session is brought to you by the city of Mississauga presented by idea Mississauga's innovation and entrepreneurship hub. So, to get started, uh, I will be reading our land acknowledgement. Sorry, I forgot to share my screen. <laughs> okay, so to get started, I will be reading our land acknowledgement today. Um, so, we acknowledge lands which constitute the present day city of Mississauga as being part of the treaty lands and traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, the Seneca and Atawandaran, and wider Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron Wendat First Nation. We recognize these peoples, the Anishinaabe, the Ojibwe nations within the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron Wendat, and all other people who inhabited these lands since time immemorial. The city of Mississauga is home to First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. As a municipality, the city of Mississauga is actively working towards reconciliation by continuing to strengthen our relationship with Indigenous communities. We formally recognize the Anishinaabe origins of our name and continue to make Mississauga a safe space for all Indigenous peoples. All right, so a bit more about IDEA. We are your central source for small business information, resources, and guidance for small business owners and entrepreneurs. IDEA is a part of the City of Mississauga's Economic Development Office, and we are currently providing our support and services remotely, and our hours are from Monday to Friday from 9 to 5 p.m. So we offer free business information and guidance, webinars and workshops, resources and tools, training and mentorship programs, as well as entrepreneurship programs. If you'd like to connect with us, check out mississauga.ca forward slash idea. So a bit more about some of the programs and resources that we do offer. So we have the business advisory services. This consists of legal services, accounting services, business operations, sales strategy services, digital marketing strategies services, as well as scale up services. So to learn more, we do have a URL uh, posted on the slide. We also offer the My Main Street program. So this program supports new and existing small businesses in Mississauga's Clarkson, Cooksville, Malton, Port Credit, Streetsville, and downtown core Main Street communities. We help brick and mortar Main Street businesses to attract new and existing consumers. The Summer Company program just wrapped up and it offers business training and mentorship to help you get your business up and running and the opportunity to apply for a grant of up to $3,000 to help you launch your summer business. So this um, program is typically offered to those aged 18 to 35. Um, to stay tuned for the next uh, opening for this program, I will be posting the newsletter at the end. So feel free to subscribe to our newsletter for information on when uh, applications will open up for next year. We also have the Starter Company Plus program, which is currently running. So this program um, includes free training in business skills development, free mentorship and guidance, as well as the opportunity to apply for a program grant of up to $5,000 and the Digital Main Street program. Um, so the Digital Main Street program consists of a free digital assessment of your business. It helps to enhance your online business presence as well as provide free one-on-one -on -one guidance, resources, and recommendations on growing digitally. Again, all the URLs are posted um, on, this, on the screen, but also feel free to visit ideamississauga.ca and look through our programs and resources to find a list of all the programs mentioned today. And lastly, we have the scale up program. So this is a four month program that supports innovative and inclusive companies to grow and overcome barriers. So as a participant, you will attend workshops, connect with experienced mentors and, and pitch your business to investors. So our, our team is here to help. So we have John Lamb, who is our entrepreneurship and innovation specialist, Susan Loveless, who is our small business consultant and myself, as mentioned, I am the communications coordinator. So to view and um, participate in upcoming webinars, such as this one, um, feel free to visit ideamississauga.ca forward slash events. We do have an event section where you can register for our upcoming events and see past webinars, recordings, etc. So here are a few ways to contact us. Um, you can email us at idea at mississauga.ca, call us at 905-615-4460, or visit our website at www.ideamississauga.ca. 
We can also be found on social at Idea Mississauga on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And as mentioned before, here is our e-newsletter sign up. I'll have it up in case anyone would like to scan and subscribe to our newsletter to be informed of upcoming events, um, programs and resources that are currently running, um, all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, feel free to sign up. And just a few housekeeping rules for today's session. So the audio is available for the speakers and panelists only, same as the camera. We are the only ones who are able to speak and um, have our cameras on. Um, the session is being recorded and it will be available after today's session. Uh, please use the chat area to communicate with uh, our speakers, speakers and panelists and to offer any comments and questions. And when you do submit a comment or question, please make sure that it says all panelists so that everyone is able to see your question and comment. Um, and the, today's presentation, resources, and a feedback survey will be emailed to attendees following today's session. So we're going to get started. I'm just going to briefly introduce our panelists for today. So we have Laura Dunkley um, and Emily Watson from Acorn Studios. So I'll hand it over to you guys. Great. Thanks, Mona. Appreciate the introduction. I will start by sharing my screen, of course. Always last minute adding things in there. So it's a it's a full day and hopefully, well, full hour and a half. Um, we welcome you guys to please check out the chat, drop things in, um, make comments. Um, Mona, remind me, can they see each other's chats or no? They can see, see the chat, yes. Okay, excellent. Because we're gonna have uh, a few exercises along the way. So open up your chat while we get started. And, uh, and we'll have some fun. Everything is about brand storytelling today. So let me just start by sharing. Screen always helps. And slideshow. Here we go. So how to tell your brand story to wow your audience. So as. Uh, Mona mentioned Emily and I are from Acorn Studio Marketing. Part of what we do is help um, other entrepreneurs and organizations tell their story and communicate it. So today's topic is dear to our hearts for sure. So today what our outcomes are going to be, not necessarily in this order, but we're going to learn how to develop your own brand st um, story, how to build a simple and effective brand strategy, and this is just everything that goes around your brand story, there's going to be a template um, included as well. Uh, discover those customer centric storytelling techniques, some resources and tools, and then how to be memorable. What kind of content can we use? We're going to discuss things like that, share tips on how to use it for your social media and websites. And we're going to spend some time looking at some brands that are actually rock stars in the storytelling techniques. So stay tuned. And also to let you know, a lot of this is very, um, I may even be reading part of it, but you have access for a short time only. It's going to be free, um, but a guide for you to build out your template, how to do this. There's a bunch of resources, everything in that. Um, and you can access that at acornstudio.marketing slash downloads. So today we're gonna walk through it. And before we get started, into the brand storytelling. This is where we're going to do a little bit of exercise just to get our minds going and to look at some ads. So I'm going to show you three visual ads and for each of them, but I'm going to actually have to open up my hold on because I've got to want to see your responses and make sure you put it to all panelists or to everyone would be really great your answers. And we're going to look at some ads and I'd like you to think of the first words that come up that would describe the brand that's advertising here. A words, word or um, a sentence or just an emotion that you come up with. Um, and first, first things um, that comes to your mind. Okay, and it's gonna come and it doesn't appear to want to. Look at that, it's not that interesting. There we go, okay, so what Who's advertising here? It's aspirin. That's obvious just from the visual. So what's the first thing that this brand is trying to tell us with the visual that's here? 
drop it in football awesome and what does oh concussion right injuries sports injuries and what is aspirin going to do for people with sports in injuries like what is this benefit that they're going to have for them pain focus protection help love it you guys are on makes you turn green <laughs> that's good okay so aspirin football slash aggressive sports and pain relief right Okay, so let's go to the next one. Okay, this is one of my favorites. So Band-Aid, it's obvious right there at the bottom. It says Band-Aid. So strength, love it. What else are we talking about? Um, healing, cut. Um, even Hulk needs care. Yes, strong Hulk even. And who's strong enough to be able to handle even the Hulk-like pain? It's Band-Aid, right? Good job. Okay, there's one more here. And let me know. Again, you can tell, tell what things we love. Connection. Absolutely. And this is Lego, obviously. Lego. Right? Can you figure out what this actually is? It actually took me a while to figure out the reaching down. What famous art is this um, representing? Does anyone know what this is? Michelangelo. Yes, there you go. The Adam creation, um, create. So their their word, one of their key words that they use is to create, right? What better thing to represent the Michelangelo, the beginning of it all from nothing, you can create something amazing and that's Lego. So right on. So this is some um, results from a really good brand storyteller. And when they have their, so when advertisers have a strong brand, um, brand story, they can start to represent um, the brand well, right? And consistent. I think we can all say that this is consistent with how we understand the brain, brands to be. So brand storytelling, just some cool facts and stats. As you go through this, um, just remember these things because this is going to be the who, what, why, when, and how. So 57% of customers over the age of 55, and quite frankly, the stats are showing almost all the ages, they want things to be funny. Now, it doesn't mean you always have to be funny. These are just sheer stats and what people want. You still have to think about your own brand. The second most popular thing is they want things to be inspirational. So funny and inspiring. And they want, so this is the young, but it actually translates from what I've seen. Everyone wants to see this. So we'll think of that as we go through this. Harvard Business Review, um, a credible source when you're looking up stats, for sure. Look for consistency across stats as well as the source. Um, say that we are wired to respond better to storytelling than most other forms of content sharing. And that's because of a medical reaction in our mind through storytelling. We are actually wired for this and it produces oxytocin, a hormone associated with trust. I'm sure there's a lot more medicine behind it, but this is some of the research they found. And then according to research also that the overall perceived value of the product is increased when it is associated the item with a story by a whopping 2,706%. Now, even if that's not even, you know, there's, you know, some deviations between the number, it's still a lot. So something to remember that when you're selling an item, adding a story, story behind it will help people associate with, with it. And it helps because it helps to create those feelings of connection and affinity towards an item. So some others are 71% of customers buy from company whose values align with theirs. So that's really important, finding the right people and making sure the values um, are consistent with one another. They're gonna look for you. 86% of Americans want to buy from transparent brands, which means you have to be honest and open and telling them who you are and be a uh, little bit vulnerable, but vulnerable with responsibility. 81% of customers say they need to be able to trust a brand to buy from them. And how do we build trust? We open up, we talk, it's consistently, and we're going we're gonna to talk more about how you can do that. So that is some of the ideas behind it. And now we're going to get into telling your brand story. 
A story is a means of transferring information, experience, attitude, or point of view. Every story has a teller and a listener. So I'm going to read a little bit more, and this is from the guide and get it. You know, this is where you'll have all of this afterwards. So storytelling has been an age old way of passing information from generation to generation. It's a way of taking a series of events and putting them together into a flow that is logical and easy to understand, combining structure, beginning, middle and end with context and descriptive terms and engaging delivery. Storytelling is a powerful method of communication. Brands use storytelling to share information about their company and connect with their ideal audience. Every brand has a story to tell and people who need to hear their message. From content marketing to sales, from investor pitches to public relations, the brands who know their story and tell it in a compelling and engaging way are those who succeed in building a loyal following to support a strong brand and their business. So whether you're just getting started today or you've been doing this and you wanna revisit your brand story, or maybe you're a marketing person who's actually telling someone else's brand, I hope today you're gonna to get a, some step-by-step -step guides and some inspiration to tell your stories. So this is it. We're gonna learn how to share information about your company in the form of a story to connect with your audience and ultimately Build your brand, a strong reputation, and convert to sales because that's what we want. Right at the beginning of the journey, as well as take them through the funnel all the way to the end to conversion, to purchase, but also maintain that loyalty. And that's going to be through storytelling. So why is it important? And we've already touched on this. Um, is it helps to build trust, right? Like if you're telling a story, people are connecting with you, that's going to help build trust. It creates that deeper connection, right? Whether you verbally tell your story, whether it's through a visual or audio or, or however, text even while they're reading it, they're going to be able to relate to you because remember that's how their brains are wired and they'll be able to make those connections. Once they make those connections, they'll have to understand what you offer to them and they will start to build that trust as well. It expresses your authority and personality. So authority, because you know what you're talking about, because if you're engaging, they're gonna be listening to you and you're gonna tell who you are. And it's gonna to get to talk about your personality. When you start to talk about your personality, they're gonna go, oh, I can relate to them. They're a real human. They're not just a brand. I am willing to invest in that company by purchasing from them. If you get them interested, they're gonna pay attention to your whole story. You're not just gonna lose them right at the beginning. And if you trigger those emotions, remember that oxytocin, it's emotions that create memorabilia, mem to become memor memorable, isn't that awful? Here's the words I'm tripping over. To become memorable, right? And you wanna be relatable. So these are all the reasons why you want to tell a story. So the founder's story, let's get started with that because this is where it all begins. And quite often this can be confusing too. So the founder is you, the story, the beginning. Um, it is what I like to call and haven't seen it anywhere else out there, but it's the prologue. Really, it's the beginning. It gives context. It tells the why the, the brand has started in the first place. But perhaps you're not the founder. Perhaps you are working for an organization. But remember that the founder's story, whether it's your own or the brand's own, it is an important story to know and to tell. It is the OG story, the origin story. So today, I'm gonna to run through some pictures of some founders and I'd love to hear your comments and what you think because there's some brands that have used this quite effectively. All right, everyone knows this, right? The visual, Colonel Sanders, he's still today, he, he has such a compelling story and is still used in advertising as well. Now you may not like their chicken, but you sure are going to recognize the founder and know that it's a compelling story. Then there's Oprah Winfrey. Now this is where Colonel Sanders is selling an item, right? That whole idea. But Oprah is representing herself. And I know we have some professional services on, maybe you do consulting, maybe you do have a magazine, maybe you do offer things like that. Make sure you as the founder or you're supporting the founder that that story is told and she tells it well. 
And you may not recognize this individual, but Yvonne Schrenard is the founder of Patagonia, one of my favorite OG stories, because in there's a on my website, I do talk about that and uh, the lorddunkley.com, and I should send a link out afterwards. It is, he talks about in his story about how he started, but also the fact that as the CEO, he ended up leaving his position, passing it on to someone else and taking on the form of a brand storyteller. He would go into all different levels of his organization to make sure that that OG story, that brand, the why they started in the first place was told consistently throughout the throughout the organization. And that story is, we all know they are really big behind climate change and supporting that. So that story is another one that's well told. And then we have Kermit the Frog. Okay, I know that one's kind of fun, but he has a story, right? Like that, he, it's hard being green. He's out there and he's Miss Piggy's favorite guy and he is the face of the Muppets. So kind of a funny one. Okay, and then why do we tell all of this? Not only is it to connect with your audience, but it's also to be potentially picked up by media publications, especially as a startup. You will more likely be um, able to tell that story in so many different ways if you're clear about that. So these are, if you wanna get inspired, there's a bunch of female founders there. And this pitch book blog talks about different founders as well. So definitely go out and tell your story. And here's, and we won't run through all of these, but on the guide, there is a whole detailed about um, how to tell your story. What are those things that you should be including, right? Like, who are you? What's your background? And when you do a pitch deck, I don't know if ever, any of you are going in for investments or in a business plan, or even if you're thinking of selling the organization, um, it's really important to know all of these things and write it down, have it as part of your deck and have it as part of your business plan. Well, that just jumped right across. Um, so, okay, so that is it. You have all of those. Now let's get started on finding your voice and your style. So Emily is on the call today too. So when you have questions, um, please feel free to ask us all about um, my background is telling stories and communication strategies. Emily's a graphic designer and a brand strategist. So very much she is part of the visual um, and I am part more of the, the understanding from a reputation standpoint. Put them all together and that's what you have to have for your for your marketing, for your sales, for your public relations and finding your voice and style, whether you're looking for a logo and getting started that way um, or taking your organization to the next level, creating a calm strategy, you need to know your voice and style. And that's all part of the um, developing your brand strategy. So one of the first things to know is this thing called an archetype. And it's to step back and figure out who you are as an organization. And some of these archetypes um, are here and they are all listed. There's a link down below and there's this really cool archetype. We'll take your time, go through it. But what an archetype would be potentially would be something and on here is a magician. So if you wanna describe yourself as a magician, say it's about making dreams come true. And hey presto, make problems disappear. They do things both big and small, they amaze and transform. So that's that kind of brand. Does that describe who you are? An example of that would be Disney, for example. So if, if that's what you wanna be, just put some words around what that would look like for you. There's also things called like a creator. Creators have a vision, a way they feel the world should be, and they want to create an enduring product that turns their vision into a reality. Adobe is one of those um, creators. I'm sure Canva would probably be another one, any of those kind of creation tools. There's another one called the Sage. Brand archetype believes that the truth will set you free. They are driven by the desire for truth and knowledge and use them to make the world a better place by sharing their findings. Um, Ted, um, the Ted Talks would be a great example and um, publications like Wall Street Journal or The Economist would be another one. So take the time, go through the wheel, have a look. It's in the guide. Um, 
figure out what kind of archetype you are and then talk, think about your personality. Excited, rugged, confident, sophisticated, or sincere are some of the key big differentiators. So rugged could potentially be like Jeep, right? That's how I would think. Um, is there anyone that wants to put into the comments? I'd be curious if they know anything for excited or rugged or confident, sophisticated, sincere that comes to mind. I would be curious. And while you're thinking about that, so sophisticated actually come to mind, Tiffany, right? Didn't they just come out, Emily, with an NFT um, too, which all is that whole blue brand. You look at that, you think, okay, absolutely sophisticated. So now it's associated with them. Um, someone's asking how important is it that people see who is behind the brand? That goes back to the OG for sure. And um, that is a good question. And we'll follow up at the end about that because we can discuss it because it will all depend for sure. So I see Chanel is in there. Chanel, I would say sophisticated as well. Um, uh, and OG, so OG is the origin story. So OG will be your founding story and we can come back to that afterwards. Jeep Wrangler for rugged, absolutely. Any other ones that you guys can think of? The top of your head? Tesla. Tesla, okay, what would you think about Tesla? Posh, expensive. Ooh, so sophisticated. Yeah, so if you're com especially if you're comparing it to like Jeep and Dodge and like the Jeep Dodge and then you go over to Tesla, that's very two different stories. Right? And then okay, so talking keeping with the car theme, excited. Tell me a car theme that you think would be excited. A fun. I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, anyone anyone out there? Before we jump in, because I would love. <laughs> okay, sports car, absolutely any other sports car, Ferrari, right? Lamborghini. Yeah. Those, even like a little mini, right? <laughs> They're kind of fun um, and innovative. Yeah. Competence would be kind of like a Rolls Royce, maybe, or, you know, sort of that strong brand. Anyway, we could spend all day. This is how you need to think about your personality. What is it going to be? Just write it down because this is the foundation. You may not think it's important, but it's going to start to attract people, right? And customers are more likely to purchase a brand if its personality is similar to their own. So this will help you as you start to do your marketing as well. Okay, let's jump in to the next exercise, the adjectives. So now we start to talk about personality words. This is a fun exercise. It's a link in from the brand um, guide and where there's a whole bunch of adjectives and it came out the, the source for all of this. Um, there's a good document to support how to do this as well in there um, and just find out all those adjectives and start to put them down. So if you are a founder, there's different columns you can put them in who we are who we'd like to be and who people think we are, right? Because sometimes that perception is not who we think we are. We need to make sure it aligns. Now, if you're just getting started, who you like to be should be that center column that you put in. The other ones will come out of research if you've been doing this a long time. And then even if you don't wanna go through all of this to start with the brand values, like what are your brand values? What does your audience need? And that Venn diagram where it meets in the center, that's where your offering is gonna be because your audience may need a whole bunch of other things, but you don't offer it. So it helps you fine tune that offering um, to what you you are and who you what you wanna serve. Uh, and yes, you will get these templates. They're all part of the guide. Okay, so telling your brand story, let's get into some tips. So now we know our story, right? We've figured out our personality, our archetype, some adjectives around who we are. Now we want to tell the story. So we need to be honest, transparent. We talked about that. Just be honest with who you're selling. You know, sometimes our intentions are to be honest, but if we don't know and take the time to figure out who we are, we can't actually be honest with our audience. So first be honest with yourself and then tell that story. Know that your mission and your values, be consistent and on brand. And we tell this, um, this, is, this is something we see a lot with our clients and people we work with 
is you need to figure out who you are and then make sure across all your materials that your messaging, the words, who you are, the visuals are consistent. Now, Emily has a bunch of things on downloads as well for, for helping build your brand strategy and how to, to do that brand consistency. Creating a brand guide is really important as a tool that we work through with people and you Everyone on some level should have that guide because that will help your entire team, whether it's just you to remind you, whether it's your internal team or whether you're working with a consultant, and that will help you visually and um, style and all of that be on brand. So make sure you do that. Be caring, customer centric, relatable, um, make sure you're engaging. Remember, everyone wanted to be funny. They want to be inspired. They don't even always need that too, but. Make sure you're not promoting yourself all the time and just pushing things. You definitely want to get them involved and more and more, and especially the younger generation really insists on being part of your story. So tell it in an interesting and memorable way. Tell it often, please tell it often, right? Like your story. And that doesn't mean just telling your OG story or telling, um, telling the story. It just. It has to be part of it and woven in everything that you do and making sure it's available to your internal team so they know your story, but also to anyone else who's looking um, for more information about you. And that is one of the things for a prime example is on your website. Your about section needs to be filled out. That's where you can put who you are, why it started, and, and your vision. So that about section, even on your profiles, right, of your social media, that can be available. Tell the story in a logical way, right, that it's beginning, middle, and end. And I'll tell you this really important because this is part of your whole marketing and sales funnel, right? You want to give that brand awareness, take them all the way through the journey, all the way to purchasing it, and then towards the end. Everything we do is in a logical way, same way as when we tell our story, and tell it consistently and to them at the right point. Um, so if they are a loyal customer, you're gonna maybe give them VIP story, maybe give them more information. Just make sure it's, it's logical and consistent. And then remember, when you're telling your story, that you are the hero of your story. Now you may not see, you may see that um, out there in the world of storytelling that people tell, tell you that you should have your customers as the hero of the story. So you can take it how you want, but to me, what I see is you are the brand. You are the one providing value. You have created a solution for your audience, right? This is you, you being the hero. The difference is that you won't be the main character. You'll be telling it, your solution will be in the background, but your audience, your customer is going to be that main character through your story. Kind of like the Hulk, right? Like the Hulk, remember in that first part and the bandage, I'm sorry, Band-Aid, you came through, you were the hero, but who's the actual main character? It's the Hulk, right? But just don't anyone forget that you are the one providing the solution and you will play different characters and different roles in your in your story depending on where you are in your journey as an entrepreneur and who's telling the story so just know that the characters will change but you are that hero that stands in the background that's there to save the day and to support your clients and remember that so focus on those benefits not the features and really believe in that story that you are there to serve so some examples of inspiration. So let's look at those. Ikea, one of my favorites. These guys never disappoint from the beginning. Um, always known as, you know, sort of the cheap um, furniture, you know, affordable, just getting started. But they have told their, they've consistently been there. They've definitely been about affordability. They've, and they also have been about giving back to the climate. Um, and sustainability and their forward thinking, they are more than just giving out things. Because this is, I think, one of the challenges they may have had was they thought it was disposable and they wanted to not ever have that attached to the reputation. Whatever their reason is, is sustainability is definitely part of their story now and they have quality, good products. So how do they tell their story? 
our heritage, it's on their website, right? Like this is really important. Um, this is their story. They, their summary report, they put them in reports that you're available for from a business investment standpoint, it's there. They have the welcome to Ikea Canada, Canada, all of their marketing on their website, everywhere across the board. They have nice quality visuals and everything is simple and practical. Look at this and even inspiring, right? Like, I don't know how many times I go for ideas to get from them um, as far as where do you put things? It's just, they create this engaging experience. They bring you into their home. They let you spend time. All of this is really good, not only to tell their story, but it's also to keep me engaged to the point where, oh, look, I saw something, I wanna purchase it. So telling your story in that way, um, that's consistent, will help attract the right people and it will help convert them to sales. Their social media has the same kind of style. It's clean, it's fresh. And then they also tell stories of their people, right? They, in a very simple, straightforward way, the language, people using their product in life, right? That's really important. How does this benefit to them? Who is it benefiting? And then let them tell their story. And they also have some really cool planning tools. So how can you be engaging with your product when you're thinking of marketing, social media, whatever that is, what are those things that you can do? We're gonna have some ideas at the end to watch my time. Ideas at the end um, for resources and tools to do this, but they have, they're one of the first to do that augmented reality in the furniture world, right? Where you can hold up your phone and picture furniture in your house. And they have a whole bunch of planning tools. So they've done, a really good job with that. So let's move into Dove. Okay, so now I'm gonna put it out to you guys again. When you think of Dove, what are the words you think of? What are those things that you think of when it comes to this brand? Smooth skin, gentle, love it, creamy, soft and foamy. Anything more about their brand that you can think of? Quarter moisture cream, oh my goodness, so true, right? It's that bar of soap. That's the, the, the first thing that we all thought of and we remember Dove, but they have gone beyond the soap, right? All inclusive, meant for all skin types, all skin types, love it. This is good. Beautiful and smells amazing. No body shaming, yes. All right, cool. See, that's that campaign. They owe natural, right? Like that's, that's really what they're gonna do. Okay, so let's run through some of their, their marketing and have a look. Do they represent this will be my question to you guys as we go through this. Are they consistent in representing that natural, consistent, um, practical things? Welcome to Dove. We see someone there, pretty natural looking, right? Young, not overly made up. Welcome to Dove, very inviting. Um, about Dove, so they tell their story. Vision of the world where beauty is a source of, ooh, I wanna read more. Discover our vision for making beauty a source of confidence, a really big one for them. Find out more about our research into the real truth about beauty. Yep, so they do a whole bunch of things there. Getting into their product, they talk about it in a very simple way, right? They don't go over and above. They have a visual of someone very natural. Leave your skin feeling clean and nourishing. They're using those adjectives in their, their marketing speak. Okay, so they're consistent there. Then they get into some Dove campaigns. And what are those campaigns? Who are they using? Who's attracting as their key storyteller? Shonda Rhimes. Yes, absolutely. What a good voice for Dove, right? Real beauty. And they do a whole series around talking and inspiring people. So the right people are attracted and they've aligned themselves with, with people that also rep, whoops, represent, um, represent their brand, right? Because you want somebody authentic to tell your story. And then recently, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the whole keep the gray, these guys jumped on this campaign when it came up to that recent um, um, challenging um, story about Lisa Laflamme. And because their brand 
was all about natural beauty, their PR team jumped on this new campaign and keep the gray. So it, they were prepared because they had their story available. They know who they were. They knew when from a public relations standpoint that they could align themselves without, you know, with authenticity um, and, and still have their credibility. So keep the gray was something they did. And because of that, they were picked up by so many outlets. Oh my goodness, right? City News, Vancouver, if you just do keep the gray and put in Lisa Laflamme um, and you will see a whole bunch of media uptick. So this is part of the power of knowing your story, having it out there, making sure your audience knows your story and being able to support a cause that aligns with your brand. And so this is just another example. So that's kind of a big example. I'm not saying you have to do this, but this, even if you're just a startup, you should be thinking um, and taking inspiration from some of these big brands. Laura, if I can jump into you with, yes. with Dove. Um, Dove is also one of those brands that goes for it and yeah. not is not afraid to, you know, get reactions out of people and really get that shock value. Um, the One of the recent ads that they did uh, was back like end of April this year. And it was, um, I don't know if anybody saw it, but they released it in like movie theaters and everything about um, like toxic beauty advice for young girls. And stuff, and it was this girl sitting at a table while her parents or something were cooking dinner, and she was getting all these notifications and seeing all these ads and stuff about injections and dyeing her hair and like all these like like surgery and everything. And the parents had no idea what she was looking at. So it, it that was it that was a really shocking commercial, but they did a great job doing it. But they went for it. Yeah. See, for all women, and it, as much as absolutely, I'm mean, like, for women, they really target that because there's so many challenges with, with, um, with women more so, and they've aligned themselves, but it doesn't mean that it's exclusively women. It's just what they have chosen, but it's natural and confidence across the way. And like you said, when they can go out, because you can now go out with confidence to do these ads, because you know who you are. And your understanding of who you are and your audience, because you've been telling a consistent story, knows who you are. So that authenticity, um, I love it. So, so good. They've been a, an amazing, but this has also been a journey. These guys have been doing this for years, consistently showing up, consistently with the same message and not deviating from it. So don't expect any of this to happen overnight, but it has to start with your brand story. Okay, so this one. Everyone know what this logo stands for? Oops. Yeah, see, everyone knows. You know this. Everyone knows this logo because it's brand recognition, right? This is what we do. This is part of it and part of what our graphic designers like Emily does is, you know, it's the start. It's the beginning. You think of your style and everything and you come together and you create this identity. And then from that identity, your story grows. And so part of this, it's this article was really good because it how Shopify is bringing online retailers into the future. This says it all. This is really what they want to do. They've made it easy and accessible for entrepreneurs. And they are so understood, especially, you know, through the crisis um, that it happened. Everyone had to go online quickly. They serve the entrepreneurs, right? They, they, they make it easy and they get your business online. So let's walk through some of their their advertising, right? If you can dream it, you can sell it with Shopify. So this, this is part of all of these things. Tagline right away, you land on their website. You can see visually and you know what it is. You start your free trial. Yep. Simple, clean to the point, empowering independent business owners everywhere. Global. They put up stats. They've built up their credibility. They absolutely want you to know it doesn't matter what country you're in. They're going to help you. And then they have stories, people telling their story, right? So this is what they put the, who's the main character in that story? It's their customers, right? Their customers are out. They might be telling the story. So it comes from their perspective, but the, the power of your customers telling your story is incredible. Um, and then they also have an affiliate program. So they have created, remember you said about being available and giving opportunities for others to tell your stories. They have an affiliate program as well. 
And then, of course, their social media is pretty major. A million followers. Last I checked, their visuals are all consistent. Everything my favorite small business right now is they are there to engage their entrepreneurs. And then here as well, even on Twitter, they have a bunch of things and they are really engaging. They really know that their um, their audience wants to be engaged. So a lot of questions, a lot of uh, amazing actually social media that they've done. Anything on Shopify that anyone else wants to know before I run into another one? Make sure I, um, how do you see Shopify? Is anyone on Shopify? I would love to know if any of their marketing was consistent and, and why you aligned with them. Yeah, you can drop it in anytime. We'll move on. Feel free to, um, we can come back to this as well. Free trial, see? You got to try. You got I love the free trial. And just before we move on then, thank you for that, is you have to get people lower the barrier to participate in your story. They have to get to know you. So quite often those free trials um, gives people a chance to get to know you. It's kind of like the open the door, right? Let's hang out on the front porch of the house. Let me know if I'm going to let you come in or if I even want to go in. So it's this experience and letting people do it. Um, integrated, simple, no coding needed, absolutely. So anyone can do this and that's consistent, right? So absolutely come give us a try because we're confident enough that you're going to love us. You don't have to have any skills. We're just here to serve entrepreneurs and help them get out there. Um, service, not sure how, nah, okay. So someone's saying they're not sure how they serve service-based businesses. Quite frankly, I don't think they do. They don't do it well. I've gone in and, and have built um, Shopify websites and um, and I've done it for a service-based business. And quite frankly, we moved it to a different platform because it just didn't give um, the right thing, but that's okay. You cannot be everything to everyone. Shopify is e-commerce. If you have something to sell, a physical item, and you wanna do that, it's there for you. There's other platforms. Know who you are and know who you serve is really an important thing behind your story. Good call on that one. Hey, for our not-for-profits or social enterprise people who are here, I know there's a few. Um, let's look at the Red Cross. If you see that that symbol, I don't know about you. I know they've been around for forever, but I think Canadian Red Cross. There's the American for this purpose. Let's do the Canadian. And what do they have there? They have consistently their logo everywhere. They have people wearing red. Their whole website goes through all of that. And what do they have showing on here? They have people, people serving people. And that is the power of their story. When there's a need, the Red Cross is there. And that is what they're showing, what they're saying, what they're doing across all their marketing. And I'm sure all their volunteers and their internal documents know that as well. Um, okay. Let's get into some of the other stories. Absolutely, they have other people telling their stories and they have their social media. And so what happens to, remember we said we have to make sure our story's available and make sure if you, as you expand, that it's customizable. Um, it's kind of that globalization, right? You have a global story, but it has to be localized for each area. And a lot of our bigger um, brands and organizations are across the world or across the country. So make sure that you have that area that you can go and find your region. Like for these guys, they have Ontario, British Columbia, and you can go right into that, whether it's a different Facebook, whatever that is. So you have to have a main brand story and then you might regionalize it um, based on whatever you're offering. Okay, any other comments before I jump back into this section? Someone did mention about turning your service offerings into products. Um, that is good for Shopify for sure, but a much bigger discussion. And it doesn't necessarily mean Shopify is the right platform for you. There may be so many other things and that's a, definitely a good point to make. So thank you for that. Um, any other social enterprise or not for profit? Because I know there's there's those key things, no matter what, there's the brand story. But if you're B2B, it definitely has a different tone and a style. Quite typically, if you're B2C, which business to business or business to consumer, whether you're selling something quick in like jewelry or clothing or something like that will have a different story. And then you're, you're not for profits and your social enterprises. And, and there's different strategies, but the fundamentals are still there. Okay. 
Let's keep going. So creating your brand story. Let, this is the steps. This is what you need. Now you understand it all and why you need it. Let's get started. So first of all, do your research. Have that business plan done. Know your history of the founder, whether it's yours or someone else, know their story, and then do your target audience research. Such a big part. There's so many exercises we quite often incorporate into all of our webinars, but uh, also something worth showing up for a workshop on that. So here are some res resources that you can have afterwards as well. We did a Digital Marketing 101 recently and talk about that, how to write your business plan. Idea Mississauga. This is on their Futures Unlimited. Um, Sue Loveless does this one, and it's a really good one, how to write a business plan. And then if you want some other audience um, information too, it's on my blog. And then once you have that, do that background. And this comes out of your business plan and that part of that research, right? Know where you want to go short-term, long-term, what's your vision for your organization? Like that aspirational, the mission is basically how you're going to get, you realize your vision. What's that brand promise? This you see a lot in Emily's world of graphic design. What do you promise that you're going to give to people, right? Is it a platform like Shopify to make it simple for entrepreneurs? You make sure you deliver on that promise. Is it Red Cross where, we're going to be there in an emergency and we're going to help you that they're promising that. So when you see that symbol, you know, that that's what that means. So know what your brand promise is, your value added proposition. What are those 4 or 5 sentences that say why someone's going to buy you? Why are they going to choose you over the competition? Or why are they even going to think of you as a solution? Know your audience, please know your audience segment. You, who's your key stakeholders? What are your segments and who's your ideal customer? That one's key. And then about your company, obviously, it's a, it's a good one. There is a blog on our website that takes you through all of those to help you understand how to put those together. So then once we have all of that in place, we did all of our exercises, we want to get into our messaging architecture. This is more the verbal, but all those words that we talked about that, um, that will help explain and, and inform all of our marketing and our communications. So messaging architecture is a small set of words, terms, phrases, or statements arranged hierarchically to convey an organization's messaging priorities, its communication goals. So basically, here's the th key things I need people to know and here it is in their priority. So it's words, terms, things like that. I would put down a few sentences just to sticky notes, do something, have it somewhere, but make sure it's available to whoever's working on your marketing sales or internal team. But it, it does help be consistent, right? That consistency is really important. All of this is part of the guide as well. So writing your brand story. Let's get to it. What are those steps? Remember we talked about the prologue? That's your origin story. Those, that's part of the story that sets the stage, right? Gives people the context, just write it down beforehand. That might be part of the origin story, but it's the who, what, why, when, and how, right? Um, and it gets you started. It sets the stage. And then who is your main character in your story? Your main brand character is going to be your, um, typically it's your ideal client, right? Now it doesn't mean that your character's won't change based on sort of sub stories, but for your main brand story, it should be your ideal client, or at least your primary and secondary. What are their needs and wants? Let's your if introduce your story that once upon a time, there lived a fairy princess. I mean, it's the same story, right? Go back to any of our Disney stories lived in a castle. She was lonely. She needed help. She wanted to be saved. All of those have that consistent story. So if you, for example, and we use this example a lot in the garden center, we have that garden grows example. The main character is the person, you know, maybe buying a new house. So once upon a time, someone wanted to buy a house and they bought a house and they had this garden and they couldn't wait to go and get it because it, they're newlyweds and they're so excited and they, they wanted to create this home their needs and wants, but they wanted it. They're expecting their first child. They wanted to make sure that they could get native plants that were easy to maintain. And they were considering the, the, the um, environment. They didn't want to have a lot of watering. See how it's just, 
it's just organic. Just put them all down. Now, again, there'll be a, a template to help you with this. So now they're looking. So the brand enters the, st the story. So that's you, right? You have the solution to help them. How does this happen? So one day they went for a drive and they went to find um, a garden center. And then I'm actually going to tell you the next point because it's part of the story. Um, do we want to introduce a new character? Is the competition worth talking about? So here's how the story goes. They go for a drive one day and they come across this, this um, garden center and they go in. No one helps them. There weren't very many plants. They were so disappointed. They purchased a few. No one said goodbye. They were really hoping for something more. So they got back in the car and they went for a drive. And soon and behold, above them, beside them is garden grows. This beautiful big sign, lots of plants out front and people mingling. So they pull in and there is this person waiting, right? So the brand enters, that's you, they see it. The competitor had that story. They find you. You are the true solution for that story. I'm going to put this down, then I'll tell you their story. So what's the impact of your solution on that man? Um, on that main character, the person, what transpired. So they went in and they saw, they saw that there was someone greeting them. They saw these beautiful plants, the lots of descriptions. Oh my goodness, I don't have a lot of experience and someone's there to help me. They have a lot of choices and they have workshops. Oh my goodness, we found our people. We found our plants. They were so excited. They purchased the plants. They signed up for a workshop. They couldn't wait to get this home and get all of these things planted. See what I mean? Like, it's so exciting, right? They go home, they do it. And what are they going to remember about you? That you served them, they gave you gave them what they want, and you made the experience beautiful. So the epilogue is kind of that ending. And again, I kind of put in prologue and epilogue. You might not see this a lot, but I think this is important. So this is the sequel. So they're there and they're playing. They can't wait to tell the story. The sequel is... They're going to go back and buy more, and they're also going to tell all their friends. So their mother also loves gardening. Now, she's not their primary audience, but she has been identified as the secondary audience. So your brand has told them about this Mother's Day workshop. Oh, my goodness, you could do this with your mother. Come, you'll both do this. So now she can't wait to tell her mother. They've signed up for the workshop. They're going to go. Now your the epilogue is that person is now the brand brand um, ambassador for your company. And then the story goes on and on. So that's kind of how it goes. Just tell it in a story way. You can do a little storyboard, um, possibly if you want to draw pictures, however you want to do it. There is so much. So this is the template. You guys don't have to remember all of this. Just go on over to our downloads. It's free for, for now. Anyways, it's free. And that part of it is um, there's different techniques that you put in and way, way more information than I've given you. Just remember that this is your original brand story, but there may be other stories. So what will happen is if now if that mother tells the story, maybe the context uh, at the prologue is going to tell who's telling the story, right? Give it context and maybe she'll have a different version. You always have to have that main brain story. Whoops. Before I move on, I don't know why this is so sensitive. Um, any questions about this? Emily, do you see? Yes, there were a couple questions recently. Um, how to include target audience stats in my story? Is it a good idea? Oh, sure. Sure. Now you can have I mean, it depends how you want to put it. I would absolutely say put some stuff in that might be in the background section, right? Like maybe it's not in your actual story because the danger is remember, this is the story that's going to be given and available to your internal team. It's going to be given to investors. It's going to be given to whomever. So if it makes sense to do that, do it. Just know that that stats kind of are that background that support it. Usually it's like, oh, well, why do you say that? So it's kind of get leading to you to the point of why you would do that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be part of your story, but you should have it to justify your story. Um, another one is what are good target audience identification techniques? Okay, that um, we have a whole series on that. I would say sign up 
for our newsletter, um, we have a newsletter as well as Idea Mississauga. And the reason for that is there's some workshops and stuff coming out. We also have some online tools that can help with that. So if you go through um, the resources I mentioned before, there is a, a series of ways that exercises to go through it. So one is the, the um, stakeholder analysis, right? Who are all those key people that are involved? And then you go down into a matrix and you go, who needs to know what when, right? Like what, who's the influencer, who needs it the most? And it starts to help you figure out who your target audience is. And then there's also segments, right? Who are your main segments? There's, there's a whole bunch of things around that. And then basically it's kind of start from the big and go down. Then when you define your target audience, then you want to develop your persona. So there's also a template available for plugging things in for your persona. So your, your persona will be based on your, yeah, um, you know, who they are and you actually create a little, little profile of them, right? What are their needs? What kind of media do they like? We walk you through all of that. So there are resources. If you can't find them, please reach out to us because um, we can help you do it because it, it is really important and it isn't something you do once and you leave it. You all, you have the basis and the structure and you're always updating it because your audience changes, right? The, the, um, the world changes, the environment changes, their needs change, so many things change. Um, so please, and especially when we went through the COVID crisis and all of a sudden everyone went inside and their needs changed overnight, everyone had to pivot um, what they were offering to them. So it may not be so drastic as that, but know that the world is evolving at a fast pace and that you should um, stay on top of your target audience at all times. I hope that helped. Any other ones, Em, before we move on? Um, yeah. no other questions now. Yeah. So yeah, personas. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. Definitely your personas is a, is an important, important piece of understanding who you serve and who your main character is. Um, so good job. Okay. Tools and resources. So let's, I'm going to just name a few. They're also linked in. These are all in your guide as well. And maybe there's a couple extra here. Um, storytelling tactics, people that are facilitators, they go in and they work with organizations quite often. We'll have these at their, at, you know, physically or digitally. I have a few. Um, so they're just inspiring and they're different exercises. They also attach to Miro and we'll talk about Miro, the online board that Emily and I love Miro for online brainstorming. And when, if you come to the workshop, there is a workshop following this, um, for you to go through all of this and we're going to. We're going to go through all of these. So these are some storytelling tactics um, decks. There's also an or um, part of this is a group that you can belong to and um, get ongoing support as well. Then we get into Canva. I think pretty much everyone knows about Canva that's in our world. But if you haven't, it's one of those online graphic design tools where you can create graphics for print and digital and you can do video now. So what's nice about them, the paid version is so worth it, but there is a good free version and you can resize things um, and they'll tell you what sizes to make for different social media or, or whatnot. And then you can also hold on, you can put your brand colors in there. So this is kind of what it looks like. If you're gonna do a video, they even give you templates. Please don't just leave the template, make it your own, customize it best you can. You do need some level of understanding of design, um, but don't just leave it as it is, just use it for inspiration and you can drag, upload your own or you can use some of their stock. So that is something that's there. And then part of it lets you do audio, let you add photos, put in stickers, create animations, make some GIFs, GIFs, however you want to say that. Um, so there's a lot of options on how you export it. So Canva is one of our favorites. Emily is an expert. We use it all the time. And then Miro. So Miro is this online whiteboard, you want to say. Uh, we love it. Part of the workshop when we do this afterwards, if you guys want to join, um, let us know. I think um, it'll be on Idea Mississauga to sign up. And we'll be using this tool. Maybe not this board, but what it what Miro allows you to do is there's a whole audience um, that's out there of users and they create these templates for you. So there's a lot of templates there and what it is, it's online. Multiple people can jump in. You can either use it for yourself or many people and use sticky notes, add emojis, put in pictures, put in little arrows. Copy. It's so the greatest tool for brainstorming. So if you want to use it for creating your brand story, it 
is there? Um, the other one, uh, oh yeah, the workshop is not today. It's in a couple weeks, September 28th. If you're watching the re-recording of this, um, we hope you'll, you'll join us, or if not for future workshops, make sure you sign up. Um, the workshop will not be recorded. It's an in-person. Um, more details to follow. So Uber Suggest is another cool tool we use, and we love it. It's part of analyzing your website, you know, for SEO and all that kind of things. But for storytelling, what's nice about it, it gives you keyword ideas to see if you're consistently using the words that you should, because keywords, right, and your adjectives may actually start to align. They have a, um, a generator for keywords. They also have a way to analyze things to see if you're doing it. It's kind of the coolest tool and very affordable. And then they have this new thing called labs, which helps you create these new generators. So if you like this word, they're going to think of other words. I can't remember which one I put in here. I think they were generating words for me on my website. So lauradunkley.com is the project. And based on the words I've used, they said, oh, you should do these based on your content here's your keywords and then here's what your competitors rank for but you don't what and you go okay so marketing consultant i need to be talking more about that so these are just some of the tools that are out there that they do another cool one that they're working on it's still in beta and i have tried it it's an ai writer has anyone used an ai writer out there I would love to know, just drop it in. We'll come back to that and maybe at the discussion at the end. But what's neat, and there's a bunch of them out there and some are good, some aren't. This one's interesting. It's not the end all be all, but I'll tell you, get you started, right? And they'll actually create headlines. They'll ask you questions. They'll put in the header, the, the main part at the top. It's mostly for blogging, right? And then some different paragraphs. Um, Birth the AI. Oh, interesting. That's a good one. There's um, SEMG, S-E-M-J-I is one too that I know is out there. There's a bunch of them. Um, I love this because it's all part of, I use it for the SEO. So when you're looking for resources and tools, try and, you can't spend it on everything, right? So I we try and look for the best of breed, but something that offers more than just one thing. So they do our SEO stuff. And then we also have this AI in here, copy.ai, awesome. So that is another resource and tool for storytelling. Overly is one. I have not used this, but I did find it, and it's for helping to create augmented reality content without code. So look at their website even. See, I know exactly what they do. They create for you your own augmented reality content without code. Try it. It's so simple, straight to the point. Um, I haven't used it. If anyone's used it, I would love some feedback um, and that we could share with everyone. And what it basically does is you can do it for print or digital. And then when you, when someone scans it, you'll be able to see what you have added to it. Pretty cool augmented VR. The whole thing is going to really help and moving towards that whole web 3.0, right? Like that is that engagement piece that we should all think about as we go to tell our story, because we have to find ways to be more accessible and more engaging. Um, smart markup smart mock-ups i can say this emily is you know big graphic design she does all her mock-ups everything's on photoshop right em is that what you use photoshop the whole adobe suite it's it's awesome can be expensive um, but if you're looking for a simple solution i did find these and basically what it allows you to do is showcase what you've done so if you're an artist and you want to put things quickly on a t-shirt because people want to see what it looks like or on a mug or you want to start selling things and maybe you use things like Printful, like print on demand product. This is a good way to actually create your designs showing on something. Canva does also have some mockups as well. Um, I can't recall if they're in the free version. You are limited, but if you need something quick and fast, um, they have some too. Okay. Good to know. Uh, Vimeo, love Vimeo. It's a um, known kind of as a competitor to YouTube in the form of video hosting. What we like and where we're going to be putting a lot of our learning um, videos is on Vimeo because you can get ad free players, right? We pay for it, but so that you guys can see it without ads. And that I think is one of their big differentiators. 
um, compared to say the YouTubes of the world. Now YouTube has its other things, but that's really what they wanted to focus on, right? That value. They also have something, and I can't wait till it comes to the average user. It's only for for um, their enterprise, and it's where you can make things clickable and engaging and start embedding um, interactive things onto their video. Pretty cool. If anyone does know of a video where you can um, program the where you can start to interact, I would be um, curious with that one. It'd be a nice one to share with everyone. I just couldn't find it. Nothing that was affordable anyway. So Vimeo is a is a web hosting. Plus they do video editing as well. Um, and then Grammarly for written. Huge, love it. Some people love it. Some people don't love it. It's not the end all be all. If you are a writing expert, you probably don't need something like this. But if English is your second language, or you want some, you're you're on your own, and it's really hard to edit your own stuff. Um, I've used Grammarly for years. I love it. It with a paid version, it lets you set goals too. To this is where your style and knowing what your style is and Grammarly will help you stay consistent. So who's your audience? Is it general knowledgeable or expert? What's the kind of formality? What is the domain? Are you an academic? Are you business? And what is that intent? What's the goal for this? Are you meant, meaning to inform something, describe, convince, or tell a story? And once you select that, it will help the algorithm um, fine tune its corrections. It goes in something like this. And if you look at the right hand side, it will start to do its little bot stuff and have a look for correctness, clarity, engagement, delivery, and even um, style. And this is kind of what it starts to look like when you, you see the corrections. Um, and once you, you can choose to keep the correction or not, this is part of the paid version, but they also have a plagiarism tool to make sure it's not out there. Now, this article, for example, it's showing plagiarism, but it's like 2% and it totally is out of context. Remember, it's just a machine. So you have to still put your own thoughts behind it. So um, totally fine. I went through and it, and it was good. So that was, that is a pretty cool, good one. Yes, yeah, see someone else, thank you, has used that plagiarism checker. And then Pierre Karma is has something new that has just come into our attention and we are moving forward with using something like this, getting um, into this whole online newsroom thing. So what it does, it allows you to tell your story to get in front of the media and it looks like your own website. You can totally brand it, put it up there and um, put out press releases. So it, it engages with the media at a very affordable rate, lets you stay consistent with your brand and it even has something, and I wish I had a visual, but you can go in and have a look. This is just an example of someone's newsroom. Um, but what it does is allows you to tell your story chronologically. So you can put up links and in the beginning, right? Here's where I started. And then you could go to the next story. Oh, we just launched a new product. Or maybe if you are doing software launches and you want to actually be engaging, which I know some product launches do that, and you start to engage people, you can put your storyline in and you can get people to follow your newsroom. So you can choose when you put it up there who you want to see, um, who wants to see it. So do you want it to just be put up there? Do you want it to go to people who are following your newsroom? Or do you want to push it out to the journalists? Journalists, yes, I said that right. And because uh, you don't always want it. So you still get to be in control of your story, but it is a platform that lets you do it. Okay, yeah, all the links are there. And then Emily and I have just started this online group called Grow. Resources go beyond all of these tools, right? And as an entrepreneur, make sure that you find a group to share ideas, things like this. Think, um, Idea Mississauga does things like this. We get to have interactive conversations on chat. You guys get to have resources to help you grow your business and make connections. Grow is just another opportunity for you to connect with entrepreneurs, other marketing professionals, network and learn. Um, and it is something that's starting in October. So if you are interested, currently it's free. Feel free to sign up. This is one of those things that we want it to develop its story through its members. We are starting it, but really this, this is about storytelling. This is about what is our story. So for the next four months or so, our members are going to develop that story um, and really be a part of it. So 
that whole community aspect is something that's going to um, move into the future, but it's it's nothing new, right? Like when I started my first um, cycling shop, we had a bike store, mountain biking, mountain biking just started and everyone loved it. We were, we took them out on the trails. We made the trails, all of those types of things. One person told another, told another, told another. It grew a life of its own, right? This community so became big and it had a life of its own. It went off and it started to create its own story. It did its thing. It still lives on today because it's run by the members. The members are the ones that tell the story through their actions, through what they want to be known as. It was never competitive. It was always fun. It was about getting people involved with mountain biking. So that is that story. Grow the same. It's going to be about marketing people, entrepreneurs, people that want to be part of this community to continue learning. And so I put it out to you guys. What is your story? What is that community that you want to develop? What value are you going to add to them? Um, where, how do you want to interact with them? What is that style? Know who you are because then the right people will be attracted to it. When they come to you, ask permission, right? But tell your story, tell it in a consistent way so that the right people, right people tell it, but make it so that they can tell the story, right? So from our mountain biking was, hey, it's mountain biking. It's fun. By through our actions and deeds and marketing, they all knew that when they showed up, nobody was racing. If they were racing, they were kind of like stuck. You stay at the back. Um, and so this is where it starts to become a life of its own. So I encourage you to find that story, like know who you are, go back to your business plan, go to your vision, mission, and all of that, write down your founder's story, figure out who you are, make it into a story format, figure out then how you want to tell it. It's going to be and, and package it all up. Brand guidelines or something that Emily does, right? So um, or you can do it. Canva even lets you help figure that all out. You've got your logo assets. You've got your colors. You've got your visuals. What's those inspiration? Put it out on all your marketing. Make sure you have it written down so that if you are starting to work with a marketing consultant or you start to work with you develop your internal teams, they have access to it and tell it and tell it often. Visual, make sure it's interactive, but visual words, um, visual words and even verbally how you tell it. So this is what I challenge you and hope you guys will have this and take this guide to get started. And then if you do want to get started um, and you want to be part of a workshop, sign up. So September 28th, um, Mona Idea, Mississauga, um, Mona and Isha will have information about how to do that. Um, and it'll be a lot of fun and it'll be in person. So this is how you can stay in touch with us. Learn more about this, learn more about Grow. Um, it's also on our website and you can get in touch with Emily and I in multiple ways. And we still have 10 minutes for questions. So thanks. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing so that we can just see everybody. So that is brand storytelling. All right. Q&A. Feedback. What do you think? What are you going to do next, guys? Um, and that, here we go. Questions. Emily and E in the chat. I think I lost them. Comments. Um... Someone was talking about Figma. Oh, Figma is another tool. Yeah. Yeah, especially with um, product developers, right? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. another brainstorming tool. It was, it is a lot of information for sure. So the brand guide, you gave everyone a link right in the chat for that mm -hmm. to download it. And you can just copy it and make it your own and use the template. There is also... I think I mentioned that, but in the guide, when you do your brand story, there's a place to write things down. But we also sent a, set up a mirror board. If you are more visual and you want to do things in a brainstorming way, there's just a couple things in there, too, that you can um, put post-it notes, add stickers, emojis, however you want to do it. And it's on the same board as that audience exercise. So you just have to duplicate that mirror board and then it will be your own. And Miro is free. So that is, um, it's, it has, a, it has also a paid version, which we do because we collaborate, but 
um, we have a team thing, but it's still, it's still a really good one. Um, LinkedIn learning. Someone's asking about SEO. Yeah. LinkedIn learning is great. If you have, if you're in the city of Mississauga and you have a library, a Mississauga library card, you can get LinkedIn learning, which is lynda.com free. It's such a great value. So definitely check that out. Um, and you can do that by signing up online. There is SEO part of one of our topics in grow. So the whole grow thing is going to be learning a little bit of learning at the beginning, and then we'll have discussions around the topic. So SEO is one of our topics too, and it's free. So um, sign up if you'd like to do that. And even idea Mississauga, we also have some past recordings um, of some stuff I did before, and we talked about SEO as well. Any other ones? Uh, Skillshare is also another resource, um, not so much for SEO, but if you want to get into more of like the like creative space and learning more about like visual identity and branding or even like um, how to like uh, build out your website and stuff like that, a lot of really good resources for that. Um, I do find LinkedIn learning is more on like a professional level. Um, and then you get like the certificate afterwards, which is really great. But for creative, I would recommend Skillshare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then make sure, I know this is a little bit off, but it is one of the avenues of telling your story. I'm a big fan of LinkedIn and I believe LinkedIn, everyone needs a LinkedIn profile. This is part of the brand storytelling. Remember I talked about the OG story, the founder story, and then the brand story. And on this is sometimes a concept that it's hard to, to get through, but you as the founder or you as the ambassador and the employee, you, you play a role, but your brand also is on LinkedIn. So you have your LinkedIn profile and then your brand has its company page. So it has a standalone brand. You support it. Even if you, unless you are a professional consultant and everything about you, it's the brand. But if not, you have to separate you from the brand. You support the brand, but the brand has a life of its own. It's like creating a child, right? Like it's your child, you nurture it, but eventually you want it to grow up and have a life of its own. So make sure when you're on LinkedIn that you have that brand company page, you work it because you're going to do different things. And any anytime your brand does something really cool, you're going to put it up on your PR karma. You're going to put it up on your website. You're going to put it up on social, including LinkedIn. And then you as the influencer of your brand, another topic we're going to talk about, right, and grow. Influencer of your brand, you will go in and share your brand story to your people. So this is how it works. Definitely always think of yourself as an employee or a brand supporter of your brand. So it learns and nurtures all on its own. So LinkedIn is a really powerful tool, especially in the B2B world. If you're in B2C or you're a marketing professional or a professional employee, you should have your LinkedIn profile. You just will use it in, in a slightly different way. Okay. Oh, some people are adding in resources. Thank you. Yes. Any other ones? Drop them in. We will love to have those. Okay. And social media, Mississauga, Idea Mississauga's links are all in there or profiles. Naming a new business and how it plays a bigger picture of the brand story. Oh, yes. Naming a business. <laughs> One of the hardest things to do because there's nothing seems to be new under the sun, right? Like it's, how do you do, what do you do first? We went through it. I know and I've started a few businesses and I'm sure all of you who have started business went through this. First we say, oh, we should go and make sure no one has taken it and talk to our lawyers. But I say first and foremost, right, Emily, go get your domain, <laughs> get a bunch of domains, whatever it is. And that's the URL for your, your website and just, Get them, make sure you have them. Cause after a year, you can drop them off if you don't use them. And they're what, maybe $15 a year to start. Get them all that you think, and then go and look for registration. Then if you're gonna be a sole proprietor, make sure you figure out that name. And this is more on the business planning side, but make sure you figure out that name. But if you are potentially going to incorporate, make sure you figure that out right away because we went through this. Naming now acorn is the fundamental, but we were started out as a partnership and we went and incorporated. So we're now incorporated, but someone had the exact name incorporated and literally lived around the corner 
Um, they weren't active, but it didn't matter. So always you have to think about this when it comes to naming. It's the business side as well as the branding side. So a lot of things happening at one time and your name is important. Now, how important it is, and this is where people get struggle and they get sort of a bit of a paralysis. That name can also be super simple and be and not even say what it is. Right, it, 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 you can bring like McDonald's McDonald's has nothing about burgers in McDonald's or right? Apple. Apple, <laughs> right? Okay. So here's the deal. It either has to totally represent what you're doing. Or you got to put a lot of money and time into branding it. It's because... also 1 of those things too. Like when you pick a name, you have to think about the future too. Like yeah. if you're, if you're selling something right now, right. Out of, you know, just curiosity, think about potentially what you could be selling in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And if you choose a name that is so specific to what you are currently selling, it could limit you down the road to right. what you're selling. And that might, you know, force you to change your name to be something a little bit more generic. Um, or you might have to start another business or create like a sub brand or something, which I have seen happen and I have developed brands for. It just sometimes can get messy. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's a hard process. It's really hard. And I know for you, Emily, you can maybe speak to it on from a branding identity and creating that the visual side of all of it, because it is so much, is there some really key takeaways that they really, I mean, we talked about some, I think you'll mention again, but is there anything that they really need to know? So if they were going to come and either do their branding themselves or hire someone, what are those things that they need to bring to you to make sure that they get the brand story right and um and maybe save them time right because yeah well i know as a graphic designer and all most most can't speak for all graphic designers the first thing that they're going to ask you is what do you sell and who are you selling to you need to clearly be able to tell somebody that and i know it sounds very simple but a lot of people can't figure that out um, and don't like, can't simply say, oh, I sell this to this person. We can't design a brand um, visually to appeal to that, your target audience, if we don't know who they are. Um, and I think that is the other stuff we can figure out together, but that will save you a lot of time with your designer if you can come with that. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to the business planning process. So much of what we do is built on from a communication standpoint, period, whether you're telling your story visually or however that is, comes from having that basic business plan in place, right? The who, what, why, when, and how. And then you can translate it from that. But but your internal communications team or external, whatever, whoever you're working with, we can't get inside um, and know that because it has to come from you. So know, you know, you have your background story, your your mission, right? Your vision, what you sell, who you sell it to, um, kind of your goals and objectives, where you're selling it, um, and then how to actually get that story out is our job or or your marketing team's job, right? That that can be done, but you have to know what you're selling and who you're selling it to, just like you said, Em. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, and we do have a download um, on our website about like a brand strategy. And honestly, if you go work with a graphic designer and you give them that document filled out, you would probably be their favorite person ever because everything in that download is essentially what I ask you. Um, so it's a really good exercise to do. Good, cool. Um, and <clears throat> someone's asking again about the people ah behind the brand. Thank you for reminding me we were going to talk about that. So who are the people behind the brand? I think it depends where you are in your journey, as, as I mentioned. So if you are a founder and you're just you're starting up and you're going to pitch to your investors. 100% there is no arguments. They need to know the people behind the brand. I will more likely invest in. Um, a startup, or even when we take on clients, we want to know 
who you are because not um, these investors are going to be working with you and they have to believe that you're competent, that you're passionate, that you have a plan, that this is the story that gets things going. So make sure that you are very clear in telling your story at that stage of the game. As you go out, now that's for that reason. If you're just doing selling a product and you're online and you're doing, you know, it's just a Shopify e-commerce quick, maybe you're doing drop shipping and it's a general store. Yeah, you know, does it really matter? Like if it can stand alone and it doesn't really matter and maybe you're creating it and then you're gonna sell it right away, your founder's story is probably not so important. It, it wouldn't be something I would spend a lot of time on. If you are a professional service, your consultant, you 100% better tell your story. <laughs> like that's, that's it. You can't, even if you're a consultant, so, and I've seen this before too, if you're a consultant that kind of buys into these coaching um, platforms or these franchises that will support you as a coach, right? And they give you a bunch of material. You still, you still have to have skin in the game. You still have to be the person. They're not you might have some tools there, but when they hire you, they're going to hire you for your thought leadership. You better be credible. You better tell them your history, because if you have no history doing this, eh, am I going to hire you? So absolutely telling your stories, whether you're a founders or your team stories is really important. Um, so do you see where it's so many different things? If you're a not for profit, um, if again, if you're just getting started or social enterprise, I would say yes. The origin story is is important, but more importantly, it's going to be the people you serve story, right? Like all of a sudden now, if your donors are your key audience, they they want to know you, but they want to know what you're doing for those people. So those people, how who you're serving would be the, the main character in your story. So it really is a depend. And that's where if you're going to work with someone to help you develop that branding, come with those things that we've mentioned, right? Your mission, vision, what you're doing and things like that. And then we can help cultivate it again, whether it's you or your your investors or whatever, but you can help develop that. But you really, um, it really is a depends kind of scenario. Yeah, and I think if I can add to that, because uh, someone did mention that they don't feel comfortable showing their face on social media. Totally get that. Um, I mean, I wasn't comfortable at first either, but I have slowly worked and trained myself to be. Um, but if you don't want to show your face, it's totally fine. There is a lot of businesses who sell products and um, who don't show their faces, but they show um, the process and everything. So they, they might not, you know, come directly in front of the camera, but they might show behind the scenes. They might show, you know, um, a time lapse of, like packing the products and getting people involved and seeing that raw material. Um, because it's not the world that we are now living in. When somebody buys a product, they, if they see an ad for it, it, that doesn't do it. That's not enough. They need to see how it's packaged, how it's made. They need to see the atmosphere of the business itself. And they want to be included from the very beginning, not just when they get the product and mm -hmm. being part of that community. So I think, and again, it, like Laura said, it goes uh, back to the depends. It depends on your audience. What are they interested in? Um, let's say, for example, you are uh, selling stuff to like the book community, like the fantasy book community. Um, I know that is a huge community and everybody wants to be a part of it and with other people and like-minded people and they want to see behind the scenes. They want to see what's going on. Um, but that's where your audience research comes in. But if you're not comfortable being in front of the camera, that's totally okay. You might have some struggles if you are service-based because people want to, if they're buying from you, they want to see you. Um, even if it's not video yet, if you show your face in like a picture or in some way, or you working at the office, I think that's a really good start. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, and you can even s tell if you're a startup, it's, it can just be a simple, this is how the organization started. It can just be about the company, not necessarily you too. So it, it goes back to that depends, but really good point, Emily, about the behind the scenes piece. 
um, that part of it is people want to see more. They want to be involved with your, your story. That's that engagement piece. The expectation is so much more now than ever before. If you're a musician, take them behind the scenes, help them understand, help them connect with you, show them some courting, you know, it, it and that's more the, the, um, music scene and the sports scene, it's been doing this a really long time and we could all kind of take some lessons from that VIP status, right? And it could be something too, like if you think of a, a really big company like Starbucks, you don't see the owner coming on and, you know, making videos and, and stuff like that. He has all of his where they have uh, their staff involved. So if you yourself don't want to be involved, get the rest of your team, show your team, show people who they're buying from and get them familiar with the atmosphere, make them feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And um, so the last one was about who's a, a small coffee roaster. Just as an example, you might want to just put on your website. Here's the founding story. You, know, you don't have to put your face. You just just tell the background story, right? Someone just still kind of wants to know how you're started because if you're local, if they want to buy local, that's really important. If you have a passion for it, it's just a way of connecting. Put it up there. But like Emily says, maybe your story is not the main character, maybe, right? Because the main character really is your customer. So you put it there, it's it's there, it's understood, and it's out there, and maybe it's part of your pitch package if you're um, expanding. Um, but yeah, put your users out. They're going to want to be the face, right? Or who's making or or where they're coming. Like, ethic, is it ethically sourced? Like, so go way back to where the beans are coming from. Take the journey of the beans across the country, right? Because we want to know, is it a low impact? Is that part of your story? So if that's the value you're promising that you're going to get great tasting coffee with minimal impact, right? Like, so that's the, that has to be the foundation of the story. So then you could do that story. If that's not important to you, don't tell that because it's not your story. You're not promising that. So that wouldn't be the story, but that is a really cool way to do it. And then you're getting other people, you know, showcasing other people, giving opportunities to get user generated content, right? Um, out there, hashtag show your love of coffee. Now that is the face of it. That's the ongoing way. But your founding story should be somewhere. Just stick it on the website in a in a subtle kind of way. Make sense? I also think too, if you sell a product, people always want to see new ways on how to use it. Um, especially with coffee, right? Like if you have a new idea of how to turn your product into something else or use it or um, get people inspired to try new things in new different ways, then that sparks them to, you know, create new ideas and, and it's enticing and it's, it's also repetition too. So, and consistency. So if you are constantly showing up and showing your brand, um, and that promise, yeah. people are going to become familiar with it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Lots of great information. Just as a reminder, thanks everyone for coming. Um, if you are interested in participating in a workshop to go through your target audience, it'll be part of it. Um, developing, you know, making sure you bring all your vision, um, things like go through the guide, make sure you have that information and then different brainstorming ideas of creating a brand story. The workshop will, you will leave with a brand story. And tips and things, different things to use. And even some of these tools, if it can be a hands-on experience, I'll be there. Emily will be away, but um, future workshops she will be included in. And we'll go through it. We'll go through it and share and talk amongst ourselves. There is limited space uh, because it is in person. Um, but if that's something you want to do and actually spend an hour and a half or so and work through your brand story with people um, and, and myself, I will be there. So sign up for our newsletters, it will come, and then you will also get a recording of this afterwards. All right, thanks. Awesome, thank you so much, Lauren and Emily, for the wonderful session. Um, it's always nice having Acorn Studios here. So yeah, thank you so much, and yeah, looking forward to next time. Okay, so, and you're gonna send everyone else out that link, right, for, for the workshop? For the workshop, yes, I will be. Um, I did also send the newsletter, um, I can send it again if you, everyone like to subscribe um you get direct updates and we'll also be putting the um the workshop link in there as well so feel free to subscribe to our newsletter here we go awesome all right guys thanks for coming thanks for thanks, all the engaging chats it was so good all right we'll see you next time bye, bye everyone